this is a time to uh, not only talk about eye tracking, but also to use your eyes. So now we'll do my presentation without using any other pointers than my eyes. So what I have now is an eye tracker in front of me. When I uh, look down, you see I can choose slides, and I can also move to the next slide. So during this presentation, I will try to do this with no hands. Let's see if I succeed. So shortly about um, Toby Technology, uh, just a few words. Um, Toby Technology is a world leader in eye tracking and eye control. So we make eye tracking devices that are used for both eye control and eye gaze analysis. Um, so basically for analyzing human behavior, but also for assistive technology. Um, so basically being able to control a computer by using your eyes. Today it's mainly used in the assistive technology, so people who actually don't, can, who cannot use their hands like I can, uh, will use the eye tracker, the eye tracker for controlling a computer. So we have a number of products within this uh, field of range where you have basically this tablet computer with a clip-on eye tracker that are now today being used by uh, by the disabled. <clears throat> but we're also looking into the future to make eye tracking that's could be integrated in your computer or maybe even your cell phone in the future. Um, quite recently we released, for example, this first eye control laptop together with Lenovo. Um, it has only, it's only a prototype, so you cannot go and buy it today, but maybe within one or two years it will be available on the shelves. So then you will be able to de deliver this same presentation that I'm doing today by just using your eyes for controlling it. Um, and of course, we are also working with eye tracking products for studying human behavior. This is just a sample of some of the products. You can come and visit us at the exhibition if you want to know more about those products. But today I will talk about why use eye tracking and why use eye movements to study user behavior. And um, Christian Lappe talked already yesterday a bit about eye tracking. I will focus more mainly on a, a bit of uh, examples and demos and what you can do with eye tracking and in research. But to understand why eye tracking is actually useful in user research, you really need to understand uh, human vision and how our human vision works. So I usually start with a short recap of the human eye because many of you have probably not heard this since the biology classes in school where you were, didn't really care. Um, so a short introduction to what, how our eyes work. Um, in our eyes we have a pupil that lets the, eye, the light come into the eye. The inside of the eye is covered with the different light resecting receptors. These are rod cells and cone cells. So this is called the retina, and there we have rod cells and cone cells. Rod cells make up about 94% of all the cells um, on the retina. Cone cells make up only about 6% of all the cells on the retina. Rod cells can only see in black and white, but they do function when we have limited amount of light. For example, in the morning when you wake up, in your room, you uh, will not be able to see colors in your room until you turn on the light. That's because then you're using rod cells. Cone cells can see in color and they can also create a sharp image. So basically now when you're looking at the screen, you're using your cone cells. And they're mainly located in a small area of the eye called the fovea where we have a large concentration of uh, cone cells. So that's really the center of your vision. Um, so um, let's see. When, uh, when, <laughs> uh, when you're looking at something in the middle of your uh, field of view, you have the center of the foveal vision where you can see clearly and in full color. And that's actually where we take in most of our visual information. In the peripheral vision, we don't take in complex visual information. For example, we cannot read text and so forth by using our foveal vision. Um, so really the fovea is the, the center of our vision, and that's where we take in most of our visual information. And a good rule of thumb to measure how big your foveal vision is, is really to raise up your hand, and it's roughly the size of your thumbnail, that's the field of vision for you. Through your thumbnail, you take in about 50% of all your visual information. And if you want to do an experiment with a piece of paper, take a piece of paper, make a hole in it, roughly the size of your thumbnail, hold it out, and then you will see roughly how big your phobia is. It's actually a quite small hole where we take in about 50% of all our detailed visual information. And of course, our eyes will also move because we have such a small little hole. The phobia is so limited. Um, fixations are the most important eye movements. That's when we take in visual information. That's when the eye stops to take in visual information. Then we have saccades. These are jumps between 
the fixations, and during saccades we don't really take in any visual information. And during a fixation we can see an area roughly the size of the phobia. In other words, if you are um, sho showing an interface to someone, someone is using a computer for example, if they don't look at the icon, the button, the text, they will not be able to see the visual information. But this, uh, this doesn't mean that everything that goes into my eye will be interpreted by my brain, because also our brain is limited. So in other words, when we look at something, the vision, most of the visual information comes in via the phobia, and otherwise it's a fairly small, actually very little of the world around us comes in, and when it reaches the brain, then we also, of course, um, have to interpret that information, and that's another filter that is laid on top of um, the eye, of, 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 on top of the gaze data. So that's just a short introduction. Now let me talk a bit about the <coughs> methods in um, eye tracking and usability, usability research. For those of you who are coming in later, if you think what I'm doing, I'm controlling my presentation with my eyes, so there's no hands and no buttons anywhere. So there's basically seven um, most common used methods in, in um, usability research and eye tracking, and I will show some examples of all these seven methods. They will, of course, all be used in a different should all be used in a different way, and of course, you should choose the right method for the right purpose. 